just perhaps an example, like in 2014, when you have the first Russian aggression in the east for the, at the Donbass. So the first voluntary battalions that were formed there to withstand this Russian hybrid warfare, they were all people from there. So they were Russian speakers. And all the commands uh, within uh, these battalions and all this when you, when you were, you know, screening the, the, the social media and, and so on, it was all in Russian. It was all in Russian. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today I'll be talking to Tadeusz Iwański, the head of OSW's Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova department. We'll be discussing the status of the Russian language in Ukraine and what political significance one's choice of language has. Hi Tadeusz. Hi Nick. So, the indigenous language of Ukraine is Ukrainian. But there are two main languages spoken there, Russian and Ukrainian. So my first question is, why is Russian spoken in Ukraine? Well, this is because of the tradition, this is because of the history, like Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, if you can call them like that, uh, before the end of 18th century. Um, they have, for many, many centuries, they have been overridden by the Russian Empire in many hypostases of, of it, like uh, the Tsar Empire and then the, the, the Soviet Empire. So this is because of the fact that the, the land, the Ukraine as a land where the Ukrainian people have been living for centuries, it was under the control of Russian state and uh, this state would it be Tsarist, would it be communist state, was uh, russifying uh, the, mm -hmm. the people there. So it's kind of cultural colonialism. In a way, like this is, that, that, that was the way how the Russian sta state wanted to uh, harder, to, to harden the grip over the, the, the people there, to make them more controllable and to make them Russians, in a way, because mm -hmm. that was the core of uh, Russian um, strategy. It was the core of Russian identity that, that there were the, the big Russians, so-called, Velkorusy. Mm -hmm. It was the, the small Russians, the Malorosy, meaning the, the Ukrainians, and the Belarusians, the Belarusians. Mm -hmm. well, so, which, which translates as white Russians. Yeah, the white Russians. Yeah, but you know, but white Russians, it, it can also mean the the, the yeah. Tsarist immigration, <laughs> right? But but this is not what we mean. But um, so um, that was how the Russian state viewed this territory, viewed this uh, many different nations that were living there or I should rather say ethnicities or ethnic groups mm -hmm. because the Russians, they have never given the right for the Ukrainians to, uh, to be a nation, to build a state. And that was the uh, continuous struggle between the Ukrainians and the Russians throughout centuries. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, very clear answer. <laughs> um, what I would like to stress here uh, for an international audience is that we know the projects, the colonial projects of France and Britain. And those empires conquered lands where the culture and the language was incredibly different. But I think many people outside of this region do not know how close Russian and Ukrainian are. So could you tell us how close they are? They are distinct languages, but are they mutually comprehensible at all? Well, they are distinct languages, and this is a very important point because at the same time, they are pretty similar. Like they are, they derive from the same family of languages, the Eastern Europe, Eastern uh, Slavic languages. So they are uh, similar in a way uh, that uh, Polish is similar to, uh, to Czech, Polish mm -hmm. is similar to, to Slovak for example, but of course you have also regional um, uh, differences 
and uh, you have a complete uh, different uh, path of uh, how this, the Russian language and the Ukrainian language, they were evolving. So when you ask any language expert or linguistic or professor or scholar, so this is like, this is fully understandable that, and this is the fact that uh, these two languages are, are, are different, but why are they similar at the same time? I think this is well for the outsiders because, uh, for example, for us, uh, for Poles, uh, when we hear Russian and we hear Ukrainian, we can easily uh, uh, differentiate, like like we can grasp the the, the differences mm -hmm. because of how we hear the language, what words are used. Uh, I would say that uh, Ukrainian is, uh, for me, is um, is uh, more, let's say, tough, and uh, the, the 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 Russian. When you hear Russian, it's more like you know, soft, uh, tough sounding, not tough it's sounding. Not tougher to learn, of They're course, of course, quite of course, difficult. of course. Well, actually, Ukrainian, I think, is uh, is is easier to learn because mm -hmm. it has. Um, in terms of etymology of, of, of words, you have like a pretty big common basis between po Polish and, and, well, and easier Ukrainian. Easier for a Polish person to learn. Yeah, it's for, not for very Polish. easy for a, an English person to learn, I yeah, would say. Well, well, for the outsiders, I think this is, this is difficult uh, in the same way when, when it comes to Russian or, or, or Ukrainian or Polish. However, I think Polish is, is much more difficult than than. Uh, the latter two. So, um, so why this language, this language is Ukrainian and Russian? Why they can seem to be very similar? I think this is because of the perception that uh, this is about the geography, like uh, Russia, Ukraine. Ukraine for very long centuries hasn't. Uh, have uh, its own state, so it could not um, promote the language uh, of its own. Um, the second point is the fact that Russian, because of the history, of the political history that I was talking at the very beginning, uh, the Ukrainian language has always been overshadowed by, by Russian, because Russian was the uh, Russia was a state and the Russian language was a state language. So um, Ukrainian language didn't have much room to develop and to, and to, and to promote uh, to the international audience. Mm -hmm. Although it does have a literary tradition. Of course, of course, of course. But uh, it was not like, you know, it was not so well known as, as the Russian uh, lit uh, literature or the Russian language, uh, I mean, worldwide. So, and the second thing I think is that, or the third point is that um, they are similar in terms of um, how you write the language, how you mm -hmm. put it down. So they are both uh, written in Cyrillic. So, the, so for the people from the outside, the symbols are pretty much similar. And even if they are not, like, like you have some of the symbols you have uh, not only similar, but 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 exactly the same in Ukrainian, in written Ukrainian, and in written Russian. There are some differences, and you have uh, distinct Ukrainian symbols. Well, yeah, English and French are written in the same alphabet, and uh, <laughs> my French is still awful, so it's not the same language. Yeah, but I think you know for for. For, for many people, uh, because of that uh, political history and because, you know, the Cyrillic is something really, really odd and something really, uh, let's say, strange. And, and for the people who, don't, who are not really interested in the, in the history or in, uh, in the culture of, uh, of Eastern Europe, uh, they, they, you know, there is this stereotype that, that, that basically Ukraine, who are the Ukrainians? Well, I, Mm -hmm. Are they Russians? Are they not? Well, this is a stereotype. It's also a subject of Russian propaganda. Yeah, it is. Of course, this is what, 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 what Russia has been promoting for, for many, many years or many centuries even. And I think that now we have, uh, with the invasion, 
like, uh, well, this is of course war, drama, tragedy. But um, from this point of view, uh, I think this is the watershed in terms of how Ukraine embarks in that, you know, international world. Like, uh, I think now, let's say in the in Africa or in Southern America, like everyone, everyone knows what is Ukraine and that Ukraine is distinct from Russia. And before that, I wouldn't be so sure if, if you know, when you ask ordinary people that they can, you know, differentiate. Hard power is the enemy of soft power. Yeah, in, in a way. Yeah. Okay. I have a controversial question for you. 1,000 years ago, more or less, the East Slavic languages, Russian, Ukrainian, and Belarusian, diverged from each other. Russia bases its history in Kiev and Rus, so modern-day Ukraine. Could it be said that Russian is just the dialect of Ukrainian? Well, I think that, you know, it is true when it comes to Russian, but it's also true when it comes to Ukraine and Belarus, in a way, because uh, the Kievan Rus is a home also for the Ukrainian identity and uh, the roots of Ukrainian culture, history, language, um, and statehood can also be derived from Kievan Rus. So I think Kievan Rus is a, you know, it's a common house for, for the Eastern uh, Slavic uh, nations, but uh, and I think these languages are, are, are separate, uh, both in terms of uh, linguistic and in terms of of um, the evolution when it comes to political and cultural environment okay. circumstances. Okay, so we're going to come up to the the present day, and I wanted to ask so. We know they speak Russian and they speak Ukrainian in Ukraine, but how many people are bilingual and do people mix the languages? They do. I think that uh, the majority of the people are bilingual. Um, I think that even young people, they understand Russian. They... To a certain extent, they can speak Russian, but what we have to keep in mind is that um, they mix languages, of course, um, especially undereducated people or people with low level of education or people when they, you know, when they speak, let's say, at home, so they can speak with a, you know, dialect or as they call it, surzik, mm -hmm. which is the mixture of, of, of Russian and, 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 and Ukrainian. Uh, but these people, they can, you know, many people can accommodate to the situation, adopt to the situation, like in the official situations, they can speak pretty good Ukrainian. And I also had very interesting, um, very interesting opinion uh, that it was in the Western Ukraine, in Zakarpatia, where a lady that is, who is Russian uh, by her roots, uh, but she's working in Ukraine, she has Ukrainian citizenship, she speaks perfect Ukrainian, uh, and all her heart is, you know, Ukrainian. Uh, she was, uh, she was, talking me the stories and, and history of the people of the refugees, war refugees from the uh, from the eastern Ukraine to, to Zakarpatia, which is at the Hungarian border. And uh, at first they were talking in Russian. And she said, come on, don't talk in Russian. Like we are in Ukraine. The only official language is Ukraine. Speak Ukrainian. That's I right. don't believe you cannot speak Ukraine, Ukrainian. And when they turned to Ukraine, to Ukrainian, she said that they were speaking like, you know, perfectly, perfectly, because that was the language that they learned not at home, but in school. So it was perfect literature, language, like, you know, the, the, the sever 
uh, 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 pattern. They will have to really practice to pick up the slang. That yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way. That was paradoxical. So, um, on the other hand, um, there is a situation that if you have people that um, speak Ukrainian, they are learning Ukrainian, they from time to time they they were speaking Ukrainian uh, in the official situations or they were you know filling the forms in Ukrainian or speaking at uh, at work because I don't know they work in the administration or or so on but 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 uh, they are living in the Russian speaking environment or Russian speaking region or they are you know Keen, rather keen to uh, to Russian culture or Russian speaking culture, then you could have the situation that basically they cannot speak any of these two languages well. Mm -hmm. Like you know, they they speak Russian and they think they can they can speak good Russian, but for any Russian from Russian Federation, they you know. At the glimpse, they know that they speak to, to, to Ukrainian because of the sounding, because of some, you know, grammatic, grammar constructions mm -hmm. and, and so on. And uh, then is there any tension between these, uh, these groups? Because there is the, the idea that uh, native Russian speakers of Ukraine are more pro-Russian. But I guess if the Russians hear bad Russian, they will not be respectful towards these people. You know, this is this is a hard question because uh, you know, in in Ukraine, like uh, if someone speaks Russian, it doesn't really have to be the fact that he is pro-Russian mm -hmm. or she is pro-Russian. Like it could be that way, but you know, it's not one to one. It's not you know, one hundred percent of people of Russian speakers uh, that are pro-Russian or they were pro-Russian, and the Ukrainian speakers they are pro pro ukrainian it is it, it, it's more it's far more complicated mm -hmm. um because just perhaps an example like in 2014 when you have the first russian aggression in the east for the at the donbass so the first voluntary battalions that were formed there to withstand this russian hybrid warfare they were all people from there, mm -hmm. from Kharkiv Oblast, from Lugansk Oblast. Uh, and these from, are generally and they, Russian speakers. Yeah. So they were Russian speakers. And all the commands uh, within uh, these battalions and all this, when you, when you were, you know, screening the, the, the social media and, and so on, it was all in Russian. It was all in Russian. So... Um, no, definitely uh, it is not true that that when you hear Ukrainian speaking Russian, it means that he opt he opts for or she opts for Moscow and she would like to have Ukraine within Russian Federation and blah 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 blah. No. Okay, you have um, destroyed one myth there. <laughs> <laughs> Russian speakers in Ukraine are not necessarily pro-Russian. There is another myth, which is the, uh, or not a myth, you will tell us, that Russian speakers in Ukraine are heavily discriminated against. How true is this? I think this is not, this is not true because, you know, you had, uh, for many, many years, you had this kind of, a, you know, parallel state, meaning that uh, you had uh, education in um, in Ukrainian, the only state language, but you also had schools with uh, for the uh, Russian language schools. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, situations when uh, where you had to perform in Ukrainian, like official situations, but uh, at the same time, you know, Russian was was widely used, and I would even say that the the usage of Russian was predominant uh, in the 90s. I think the, the, the watershed was 2013 after the revolution of dignity and the first aggression. Like, like here you have the turn 
where people say started to think that, well, I should not speak the language of the aggressor. Like this is something you know not not correct. Something that is um, uh, contradictionary somehow. And we should not do that. But before that, you know, you had the situation that, uh, in, for example, in, uh, uh, in television, you had, uh, 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 you had people like the speakers or the guests in the, uh, in the TV shows. Um, they were speaking Russian or they were speaking Ukrainian, like you had a mishmash, like, like you know, they, 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 uh, they, they spoke the language they, they preferred to speak. And, you know, there was, there, there was no fine for that. There was no persecution for that. It was very, very, uh, uh, let's say, liberal and tolerant, um, uh, I, would, I would say, like that. Well, I wanted to ask about one particular uh, TV personality, uh, the current president, Volodymyr Zelensky, yeah. who had a very, very successful career on television. To my understanding, it was mainly in the Russian language. Yeah. Okay. So um, now he... He was even making jokes of Ukrainian. Language. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, as far as I remember. This I did not know. <laughs> okay. Well, he's converted. He uh, he barely speaks a word of Russian these days. Is he a symbol of this change? Let's not speak the language of the aggressor because he he speaks one hundred percent Ukrainian. I think both. I think both because first point is that as a president, he has to speak Ukrainian because this is the only state language. Mm -hmm. So he has to speak Ukrainian, and you know. 99% he speaks Ukrainian because, well, the, the uh, exception is the fact that sometimes he's addressing his, you know, night um, addresses to Russian politicians or Russian people, and then he speaks in Russian to be better understood. But basically, as a president, and it was the fact with all previous presidents, no matter uh, if they were, you know, pro-Russian or pro-Western, like it was the case of Kuchma, it was the case of Kravchuk before Kuchma, it was, of course, it was the case with, uh, with Yushchenko, and it was even the case with, with Yanukovych, who was, mm -hmm. you know, openly pro-Russian uh, politician, and, but he was speaking Ukrainian because this is what the Constitution said says that like he has mm -hmm. to so this is one uh, one reason why Zelensky is speaking uh, uh, Ukrainian and why he learned Ukrainian in an active way because uh, the fact that that he knew he understood Ukrainian in a passive way that like this is for sure that he he uh, he knew that but he learned to use um, Ukrainian actively and the second uh, reason is that turn that you mentioned is that uh, with the with the invasion uh, uh, full scale invasion, the people are um, the Ukrainian people they are rejecting the Russian culture, Russian language. Like this, this 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 process that I mentioned after the first aggression, two thousand thirteen, it got very much you know strengthened so uh now you have the 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 notion from the from the start of the invasion that 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 people are openly rejecting um uh, russian language uh, you have testimonies uh, in the social media in the, uh, in the uh, traditional media that from now on i will not be speaking uh, russian because this is the language of the aggressor Sorry for my uh, mistakes in Ukrainian. I was not using that language publicly. I was not uh, writing in that language. So, for, so sorry for that. But this is like my position. This is my identity. I'm rejecting uh, Russian culture. So, uh, so I think what Zelensky is doing, this is, you know, this is reflecting that shift, that turn that uh, we can observe within the society. Okay, I only have one small question left, which is, you, you are saying that people are starting to shift to Ukrainian. 
and they are apologizing for their mistakes, etc., etc. But for every Ukrainian, they've had Ukrainian in school, they have a passive knowledge of it. It should be more or less possible to learn to speak Ukrainian. But is there any government support for this? Or is there any uh, courses arranged for adults? Um, is it possible to go and study Ukrainian in Ukraine? Go and study Ukrainian? Yes, yeah, so take an evening class. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm not sure that, that this is like, you know, kind of an affirmative action that from, from, the, from, the, from the state that, you know, that the state or the educational system, they are offering the free uh, classes of Ukrainian. I haven't heard about that. Mm -hmm. But basically, you have a lot of private companies that are offering the, the Ukrainian language courses. So you can, you can, you can apply for that. You can, you can learn U Ukraine, Ukrainian if you like. But you know, what, when I'm comparing the situation from, from before the invasion and now, you know, the, the, on one hand, you have, when you go to Kyiv, for example, that before the invasion of Kyiv was like, you know, the, 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 the share of people speaking Ukrainian in, you know, private conversations on the street, in the cafe, and so on, so on. I think it was like 50-50, perhaps with the, with the dominance of, of Russian. So now the situation is uh, is different. I would say that now there is a bigger share of people speaking Ukrainian, and I and I think they are speaking Ukrainian now with uh, being more aware what does it mean to speak Ukrainian. That this is uh, the political position. This is the resistance to towards the Russian aggression and so on, so on, so on. So you have this situation. On the other hand, still, there are a lot of people who use Russian language uh, at home. They have been raised, they were born in the Russian-speaking families, they were raised at home, they were, you know, uh, much into the Russian-speaking culture or the Russian culture. So, you know, the stereotypes, they... they they are like no, you know. They are like stereotypes. Like like this is a kind of a statement, but in it doesn't necessarily reflect the the, the reality, because you have this let's say stereotype that uh, that the Western Ukraine and Lviv, it is you know that they are fully Ukrainian speakers, like the people living there. But now you know a friend of mine was in Lviv a few days ago, and he told me that he was you know astonished and, and puzzled in the same time that, that you had a lot, a lot, you know, tons of people speaking Russian because they were the internal, internally displaced hmm. persons, uh, 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 people from, from, from the central part of Ukraine, from the eastern and northern part. Well, so, so the parts of Ukraine where the usage of, of, of Russian was more popular, let's say, and it also uh, derives from the history, right, that these parts of of, of Ukraine, the, 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 the eastern part and the, and the southern part, they, uh, they have been under influence of, of, of Russian because there were people sent from, from the Russian Federation or, or from the Tsarist Russia. The whole process of modernization was uh, carried out under Russian state, would it be Tsarist state or communist state so that was the language or well, the, the traditional language of people living there so still you have like this two languages parallelly coexisting i think that on uh, you have a lot of you know um, discussions and debates and quarrels and disputes uh, in the media especially in the social media that someone speaks russian and so on, but I think on that you know regular basis, on you know on the basis of you know private communication, let's say uh, under the radars, I think still you know you can speak Russian in Ukraine and you can communicate with the Ukrainian language speakers, and on that level, I think 
they they coexist um, they coexist pretty easily. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have dispelled most of the stereotypes today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching this OSW interview. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with all future content.